Okay, now we're going to talk about the tools used in plastering. Uh, first one is the actual plastering trowel. So this puts external rendering and plaster actually on, onto the wall. Come in various sizes, but uh, this one is 280 millimeter, and this is what really would recommend when you start plastering course. You've also got a handboard or a hawk, and this is where you take the plaster from to put actually onto your travel. If you uh, do an external rendering outside, when you put the first coat on, then you need to form a key. And by uh, using a scratcher, similar to what you can see here, this forms a key to put the second coat on. Once you put your second coat on, you need a fiberglass float, and then this smooths, makes it smooth, ready for the uh, painting to be applied. Uh, this is a, an external angle trowel, if you don't want to put an angle bead on and you want to get a more traditional look, then you use this to form a 90 degree corner. Always need a, a hand brush to clean all your tools off. It is vital that your plastering tools remain clean. If they want to become dirty, then it makes the job an awful lot harder. I've uh, got a, a bucket trowel as well. So bucket trowels, these have got a uh, square edge and these are really designed to actually take the uh, plaster out of the bucket. Uh, tape measure and a pencil, they're really required for every element, whether you are producing casts, whether you are marking out um, plasterboards or you prepare to cut plasterboards. Uh, I also need to have an old tenant saw. This is ideal for maybe cutting plaster casts or curving. Um, you need a Stanley knife. Uh, if you um, come to the college um, and you've got a Stanley knife, you just got to tell us before you actually come. But uh, you are allowed to bring a Stanley knife to the college as it is actually part of your course and these are used to cut uh, plasterboards. I've also got a claw hammer as well, pretty much multi-purpose really. Uh, this, is, this can be used for uh, positioning uh, casts onto a wall. I've also got a paintbrush as well. Uh, Paintbrush is vital when you're at the skimming section, so when you're putting the board finish onto a wall, you need to go around the edges and you need a, a paintbrush to ensure that they're a clear crisp cut. I've also got something called a, a small tool, and uh, this is really when you are uh, producing casts. So if there's any intricate work to be done, then these are what, what you use. And then uh, the last thing is uh, a 90 degree square, a bit smaller than what the bricklayers use when they're uh, in, their, in their workshop. So this is really used to ensure that if you are cutting a cast, that it, it is true and it is 90 degrees. And you also use spirit levels as well, so again, in, in the bricklaying workshop, they use um, usually 900 or 1200 millimetre levels, similar to, to here in, in plastering. But we also sometimes use an 1800 mil spirit level as well, so this is ideal for marking out when you're coming to do the, the casts and the curving. And that's uh, pretty much now uh, all the tools you would use in, uh, in plastering. Right, I'm now going to show you how to uh, plaster just a small wall, this section here. I've already mixed all the, um, the skimming already. So that, that's all done, and this will be shown to you on your course how you actually mix it. So down, uh, down here I've got um, my skimming mixed, 
and also a, a water bucket as well to keep all my tools, tools clean. So I put my um, skimming on, on my hand board and then all from there then I've got to take it off onto the trowel and then I put it back on the hand board. And the idea is if you do that a couple of times then hopefully I've got full control of it. And then rather than put all that on the wall at once, we're going to put half of it on. So we're going half of the board, leave half of the trowel and, and half on the hand board. And then because I'm left handed I start at the right hand side and I work towards the left. So from there I start down here. So I start at the right hand side and work towards the left. That's now then got the uh, first coat on. Then I'm going to give it a few minutes now just to slowly go off. I'm going to mix a little bit more and then we'll apply then the second coat. Okay, so we've given that about 10 minutes just to go off and now we're going to apply the, um, the top coat. So the second coat is a little bit thinner. So the first one is maybe two to three millimetre thick. The, the top coat it's just literally just one millimeter. It's literally just to fill up any holes or any gaps that you haven't got in the first coat. And by putting the second coat on, it allows when we trial it up towards the end it makes it a lot easier. If you put one coat on, you've got a lot, a lot more holes to fill up. If you put two on, and we fill up most of the holes in the second coat, when we come to trial it up in another 10 to 15 minutes time, it just makes life a lot easier. And when you're mixing, you've just got to consider, when you're putting your first coat on, however much you need, when you come to put the second coat on, you only need to mix only half the amount. Because obviously if you mix the same, you're going to have a lot of waste. Similar so sort of thing. The second coat on goes on exactly the same as the first. And me being left handed, I start at the right hand side and go towards the left. If I was right handed, I would start at the left and then go towards the right. So now what I'm going to do is now give it a few minutes to go off and then we'll have a go then at trialing it up. Okay, so give it a bit, it's had about maybe 10, 15 minutes now. So all I need now is just the um, paintbrush and then my trowel. And all we're going to do now is just uh, trowel it up. And all that means is we, we kind of crisscross it. So when we put the plaster on, we went up and down. When we're trailing it up, you can also go horizontal. So what we can do is now, we can start again, because I'm left-handed, I start from right hand side, and I'll go right the way across horizontally, and then back again. And I start at the top, and then all I do, is went my way down to the bottom. And it 
It's important that we also keep our trowel clean. If it becomes dirty and you get little bits in it or bits of stones or pebbles in it and that gets into the plaster then it just creates loads of holes. And then once we've gone over it horizontally then we can then go over it um, up and down similar to how we, how we actually applied it. So from there we can start at the bottom And when we're plastering, we don't need to go from the bottom to the top and then bring it down again. When you get to the top, you just tilt the trowel and then push it back down again. So from there, we go to the top, tilt it slightly, and then we push back down again. And to do this course correctly, you want a minimum of two years, ideally three years. To become a fully qualified plasterer and then we we'll give that now there'll be another 10-15 minutes and then give it another trowel over quick final polish and then that should be all be done